The moon has no atmosphere, no life, no liquid water, no breathable air. And yet, some believe it holds the key to the future of energy. A retired US general recently claimed China is already mining helium-3 on the moon's far side. No evidence was shared. Just a bold statement. But it's enough to raise eyebrows. Is China really digging into lunar soil for helium-3? Are they quietly racing ahead in the next global energy race? Or are we just seeing science fiction dressed as fact? Let's separate speculation from science and take a grounded look at whether China is mining helium-3 on the moon. The far side of the moon is permanently hidden from Earth. Because it never rotates into our view, it's easy to imagine secretive activities happening there. And that's exactly where China's Chang'e 4 mission landed in 2019. It was the first spacecraft to soft land on the moon's far side, and it's still operational. But let's be clear, Chang'e 4 is a scientific lander and rover. So is U-22, its robotic companion. They're equipped for geology experiments, not for industrial-scale mining. If mining were happening, we'd expect to see heavy equipment, power plants, extraction facilities. Yet NASA's lunar orbiter hasn't detected anything like that. Still, the moon's far side remains symbolically important. It's remote, quiet, and difficult to monitor. And it may even be richer in helium-3, due to more direct exposure to the solar wind. That's why the rumors persist. But we're not talking about sci-fi. We're here for the science. Helium-3 is a rare, stable isotope of helium. It has two protons and just one neutron, unlike regular helium-4, which has two neutrons. And that small difference gives helium-3 extraordinary properties. It's non-radioactive, it doesn't decay, and it could be the fuel that powers nuclear fusion cleanly. Unlike today's nuclear power, which splits atoms and leaves behind radioactive waste, helium-3 fusion would combine atoms and produce almost no dangerous byproducts. It's also ideal for quantum computers. In ultra-cold environments, helium-3 can cool quantum bits, or qubits, to the stable conditions they need to function. That makes helium-3 a strategic resource. Not just for energy, but for computing, defense, and even medical imaging. But there's one problem. We barely have any of it on Earth. So where can we find helium-3? The sun creates it and sends it out as part of the solar wind, a stream of charged particles constantly flowing through space. Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere deflect most of that wind. But the moon, it has no such protection. So for billions of years, the lunar surface has been absorbing solar wind directly, embedding helium-3 into the top layer of lunar soil, known as regolith. It's still rare, only about 20 parts per billion in the soil, but that adds up. Some estimates suggest the moon could contain over a million metric tons of helium-3. In comparison, Earth's usable supply is measured in kilograms. That makes the Moon the richest source of Helium-3 in the solar system. But having Helium-3 on the Moon is only part of the story. The real challenge is figuring out how to actually get it out of the lunar soil and bring it home. So, what would it really take to mine Helium-3 on the Moon? Let's take a closer look at how this extraordinary resource could one day be extracted. Let's get practical. How would Helium-3 be extracted from the Moon? Step 1. Robotic Excavation Machines would need to scoop up huge volumes of regolith, possibly millions of tons, to collect just a few hundred kilograms of Helium-3. Step 2. Heating The soil would be heated to around 700 degrees Celsius. That releases the trapped gases, including Helium-3. Step 3. Separation. Advanced cryogenic systems would isolate helium-3 from other gases like helium-4 or hydrogen. Then you'd need a way to store it, transport it, 
and return it safely to Earth. This means building furnaces, gas processing units, storage tanks and launch systems, all on the moon. It's a massive undertaking, and right now, China has nothing close to this level of infrastructure deployed on the lunar surface. Even if China isn't mining helium-3 yet, they're making steady progress toward that goal. In 2020, the Chang'e 5 mission brought back 1.7 kilograms of lunar soil from a previously unexplored region. Scientists detected traces of helium-3 in those samples, confirming the isotope's presence on the moon. More recently, in 2024, Chang'e 6 returned the first ever samples from the far side. Analysis of those samples could reveal even higher helium-3 content. The upcoming Chang'e 7 and Chang'e 8 missions aim to explore the South Pole, another promising region for helium-3 and water ice. Chang'e 8 is designed to test technology for using lunar resources, known as ISRU, or in situ resource utilization. That means it could carry the first true experiments in extracting volatiles from moon soil. No mining yet, but definite steps toward it. As China's lunar missions advance, the next steps are coming into focus. The moon's surface, silent and untouched, is about to witness new ambitions. China's goals are clear and ambitious. By 2030, they want to land astronauts on the moon. By 2035, they plan to build a permanent lunar base, the International Lunar Research Station, together with Russia. That base will include nuclear power, solar arrays, and potentially even pipelines across the lunar surface. And in 2024, Chinese scientists proposed an electromagnetic launch system, a kind of lunar slingshot, to send resources to Earth more efficiently. They're not guessing, they're planning. And Helium-3 is one of the long-term targets baked into that plan, going back more than 20 years. So what's the answer? Is China already mining Helium-3 on the Moon's far side? No, there's no public evidence of mining, no signs of industrial hardware, no return shipments of Helium-3. What there is, is research, exploration, and preparation. China is methodically laying the groundwork for mining Helium-3, when the technology, politics, and economics all align. They may not be digging yet, but they're getting ready. If Helium-3 becomes the fuel of the future, clean, powerful, and compact, then the moon will become more than a destination. It'll become a resource frontier, and in that future, whoever controls Helium-3 could control energy itself. Right now, we're not watching a mining operation. We're watching the setup, and when the time comes, China may be first to flip the switch. The far side of the moon might be quiet, but it won't stay quiet forever. Interested in more stories like this? Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to our channel and turn on notification button so you never miss a new episode.